So let's talk about types. T the type of an object basically defines its layout in RAM and the operations that are legal upon it. Now hopefully you're totally lost when I say that. That sounds very PhD-like, does it not? Let me try to explain. Let's start with one of the most basic types there is, int my age, and I'll set that to 55. Even though I'm not really 55, you can guess how old I am. Uh, int is a type. It's actually, when you write int, the compiler replaces it with system.int32, but we'll kind of ignore that for now, except for the fact that there's 32 out here, meaning 32 bits. So already by saying int, I've said that this instance, this one integer, I need 32 bits to store a value in it. All right, now also by saying int, I can basically store negative values, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can store a range of negative values and up to a range of positive values. And there is a max of how low I can go and how high I can go, and that is determined by the fact that there are only 32 bits. If you really under want to understand what limits you as far as ranges go, go look at the binary videos, binary numbers video playlist. But we'll ignore that for now. Basically when I say int, I can have negative numbers and I can have positive numbers and they must be counting numbers. That is, I have zero cats, I have one cat, I have two cats. But if I have 2.431 cats, that's kind of creepy. Anyway, so integer means you can stick any of these counting numbers in here. So my age could be 55, but maybe I've lived a few months into my 55th year. And as soon as I put the dot, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah here, uh, we get the red line saying, hey, um, um, that's a double, and I can't convert a double to an int. All right now, well, double, double, that's another type. Let's look at double here. Double, uh, I don't know, double my water bottle ounces. I'll put the, I'll actually put the unit out here. Get, say my water bottle holds 32.78 ounces. Well, double is another type. It's different from my age, and in fact, double, the compiler replaces that with, I think it's system dot, is it system dot double? Yeah, system dot double, and this double basically says, hey, 64 bits, right? So just by using double, not only am I double <laughs> the amount of bits that are in my age, remember this is 32 bits, this is 64 bits, but now this type can also store values other than just the counting numbers. So you may think, well, why do we ever use int? Why don't we just always use double since there's a more granular range there. Oh, look at that big word, granular, if you think about sandpaper. Sandpaper can have different grain values or granular values. And, and I can get more precise here. You know, maybe I have, have some really precise amount of ounces in my bottle. Anyway, that's besides the point. Well, in most cases, in a lot of cases, we want to do these discrete steps where it's one, two, three, four, five, and in some cases we want to do that, and that all depends on the type that we are using, all right? That's something to take in consideration. Now watch, I'm going to go down here, and let's say int, um, this is nuts, all right? But I'm going to try to add my age to my water bottle ounces, all right? Should get the magical red line that says, hey, um, if you want to add an int to a double, that's fine because I can convert an int to a double. That's, I mean, I could, heck, I could do it right there, could I not? Uh, and that's essentially what the compiler kind of does here when we add an int to a double. But then what's returned from this is this is another double. Okay, so whatever, let's grab this. I'm going to view standard. Whatever 55, 55 plus this value plus that value is, so 87.79084, blah, 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 blah. That's what's returned by adding these two values together. Uh, but then I'm trying to assign it to an int. All right, remember, int can store 87, it can store 88, but it can't store anything in between. So we have a limitation on what this chunk of RAM can do based off of its type. All right, so the type, there's point number one, it defines the layout 
of an instance. So this is 32 bits for this guy, 64 bits for this guy. This guy, if you want to go look at my floating point videos, in uh, go search for my floating point videos. The way we interpret the bits is very different from how we interpret the bits here. Okay, and that's that's different layouts, so to say. And then uh, the type also defines the operations. So let's talk about the operations. I'm going to. I think we're done with all this. Let's get my age back. It gets 55, and I can take int your age, like so, and say you're a young, healthy person. We'll say you're 25, and then int combined age. Well, I can say that's my age plus your age. Right now, the fact that I can add two integers together, this is an operation I can perform. And the compiler literally has to look at the operands, or the left side and the right side, and say, hey, is the uh, plus defined for what they're trying to do? Let's look at the type. Right? Well, what is the type of my age? The type of my age is an int. What's the type of your age? That's an int. So yes, we can add two ints together. Then we can store that result in another int. Alright, let's do strings. Alright, strings that store character. String my name gets Jamie. Alright, and string your name. I'm sorry, I do not know your name. So I'm just going to say uh, watcher because you're watching this video. Alright, I can say string combined gets combined names. How about that? Gets my name plus your name. Right now, it's critical to look at the types here. When I take two ints and I add them together, 55 plus 25, that'll give me a value of 80. So adding 55 and 25 combines to give me a numerical mathematical result. However, with strings, like Jamie and Watcher, when I add Jamie to Watcher, the result will actually be Jamie Watcher. Right? It concatenates the strings. It puts one string at the end of the other string. Right? And that, that behavior is defined by the type of the objects that I'm passing into this, this plus sign, and the type is string, and that's how string is defined. Now I can go a little bit further and say int difference in age is my age minus your age. Alright, well it's 55 minus 25, that should give, that, that would make me, at least in this case, I'd be 30 years older than you. Alright, subtraction again is an operation that is defined for the type of integer. Right? This is a totally a totally legal operation I can do for an integer. Right? But now watch what happens. String difference in names. Well this is gonna be kinda weird. Difference in names. There we go. Uh let's say it's my name minus your name. Well what does that mean to subtract one string from another string. Maybe you could get into set theory if you're familiar with that and do some set theory stuff. But you can see we have the red line here. I'll hover over line. It's hover over it. It says, uh, uh, operator minus can't be applied to operator uh, operands of type string and string. Okay, the, the compiler's like this isn't defined. The people that wrote the string class, uh, they didn't write a minus operation for string, so I can't I can't support that. All right, so so that's that's the second part I was talking about with types is the types they define the layout. Okay, strings are obviously laid out much differently than ints. Not going to go into all the details in this video, but then they also define the operations that are legal for an instance of that type. For example, minus is not equal or minus is not legal for string. Now I'm going to uh, delete that. Let's see if we can get one more example. My age. All right, again it's an int. What kind of things can I do? With an int, I can compare it to other ints, and I can ooh, get its type. And I have my helper functions here; these these extension methods just ignore. I ignore them. I I have two string. I can call two string on an int. Okay, so I, I'm kind of limited here. Yeah, these extension methods here are not part of the actual type; they're extensions that I've written and are available in my project because I added a reference to those extension methods. You can tell the extension methods here with the blue arrow. So just ignore them, but with an int I can do compare to and equals, get hash code. These these are all defined by object, the base class of every class in the uh, .NET framework, or in C Sharp, well, both. Eh, that depends on who you talk to. Ah, long story, not going to go there. Let's look at my string, okay? Let's look at uh, my name. All right, what kind of operations? Whoa, I got a whole slew more things I can do with a string. Okay, simply because these operations are defined for a string. 
Right? I can say to upper, and that would return an uppercase version of the string. But I certainly couldn't come here and let me put a semicolon there. I, I certainly couldn't come around and say, well, my age dot to upper because to upper is not defined for an int. The type is very critical. All right. I, anyway, I hope that makes sense. I can two upper on a string. I can't on an int. Two upper is not defined for an int. All right. Anyway, very good. That's that's kind of an introduction to types and why they're important. They define the size and the layout of the data inside of an instance. And they also define the operations that we can do on an instance. So in the next video, I'm going to talk or demonstrate this a little bit more by making one of our own types.